Welcome back to Chaos Corner. It's your old buddy, the guardian of chaos, Big Daddy. And I tell it like it is. I'll say that to say this. Here, live to tape. Same day coverage for the Mets report. Fans, you're not going to want to miss what I have coming up here. I have all the latest news, rumors, notes coming out of Mets camp down in Port St. Lucie. It's a beautiful day. It's going to get up to... 70 degrees over the next couple of days here in the greater metropolitan northeast corridor, New England, of the country. You could see the Wi-Fi is on. The solar music is pumping and we're having a good time. I believe this is show number three of Chaos Corner of the Mets Report. Now we have a lot of trending stuff coming out of Mets Report and I want to talk about that. We'll lower the music. We're down here unedited, unscripted for our new venture the Mets report. Now, fans, I've said it in the first couple of promos and the first couple of opening monologues. I am over a 45-year Mets loyalist. I will have boots on the ground at City Field this year, as I do right now down in Port St. Lucie, to give you the best reports. And, of course, I follow all the local Mets beat reporters, and you know who they are from Mike Puma uh, to Anthony DeComo to Eddie C to even Joe from Flushing. I mean, listen, there's a lot of great reporters out there, but you won't get from them what you'll get here at Chaos Corner, a true fan's perspective of damn near a half a century. So I appreciate you being here. Today, we're an off day for the New York Mets. We're going to wrap up and we're going to start off with, listen, we're less than, we're about a week and a half away, less than that to opening day 2021. There's a lot of great projections for the Mets. The future looks bright, according to Mike Piazza, who was in camp this weekend. That's what we're going to talk about. We're even going to get on to some Mets triviology. Follow me on all social media platforms, especially YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You're not going to want to miss it. Stay here. Come on back for the Mets Report, show number three. Don't you dare miss it. All right, fans, let's get down to the report I have here today, live to tape, same day coverage on a Tuesday. The Mets were off yesterday. Uh, we are off today. Tomorrow, the Mets will be home, I believe, against Miami. And the game will be broadcast on SNY with our old buddies, Ronnie Darling, Keith Hernandez, and Gary Cohen. It doesn't get any better than that. And then, of course, I'm sure you can hear on 880 uh, CBS, Howie Rose, and I believe... Uh, and if you don't love this guy, I don't know what the heck you're doing listening to sports talk radio or even baseball. And that would be one Eddie Coleman. So far, the Mets this year in spring training, and I know I get it. I said it the first couple of episodes, it's spring training. So I'm keeping that in perspective. Right now, the Mets are 9-8-1 in spring training. Uh, as I said, uh, Mike Piazza was in camp all weekend uh, talking to the catcher McCann, talking to Nito, uh, all the different guys, and he even sat down and gave a little advice to Francisco Lindor. So we're going to cover all of that, and we know right now that there's a $300 million proposal on the table for Francisco Lindor. Now, there's been a lot of speculation and rumors coming out about Lindor uh, on different reporters and different TV shows and different um, uh, sports media outlets saying that Lindor definitely wants to be here. And then you're hearing on the other hand that uh, they're not sure he might want to test free agency, which I hope it doesn't come to that. I've said on the first couple of shows and on the debut show, I believe Lindor is going to be here. But with like seven days left in spring training... Uh, that's the window and the time frame here that you'll want to get things done or maybe you'll opt for free agency and you don't want to be distracted. So there's mixed messages coming out. I've heard quotes. I've quoted Lindor. Uh, uh, you see what Piazza has to say. And Piazza said this, if it's meant to be, then it'll happen. Uh, he believes Lindor. He thinks he also wants to be here. I not sure. I think the original offer for Lindor, listen, this is just numbers. I'm not going to break it down to uh, pure statistics. I believe it was $250 million. I don't even like to talk about it because I can't even fathom it in our world as fans. And I believe it now went from 250 to $300 million. I think we're going to get it done, fans. I really do. 
So we lost our last game. Again, it doesn't matter, but I just want to throw it out there. I thought we had won like eight out of nine games, but I might have, I might have been wrong on that one. I think we had a seven-game winning streak in spring training. Again, it means nothing. Uh, we lost to Houston 5-4, to four, but the good news that came out of the last game before we uh, play Miami again tomorrow. Again, the, the preseason's wi winding down. Spring, tra spring, spring training, for all intents and purposes, with the exception of the last few roster spots and with a huge injury to Carrasco. Uh, we'll talk about that as we move forward here in the Mets report. What did come out of uh, the, the loss the other day? Some good news. First off, and you rarely see this if you're a baseball fan, the Mets turned a 4-6-5 triple play against the Astros. And once I saw the highlight of that, because I didn't see the game live, uh, what a play. It almost could have been unassisted. So if you want to see something that's rare, whether it's spring training, regular season, playoffs, World Series, uh, the triple play by the Metropolitans. Hey, you got to believe, man. I hate to keep using that slogan, but it's been there since 69. Another good thing that came out, and he took the loss, but here's the odds-on favor, especially with Carrasco going down. Lucchese, I believe he pitched three, three and a third innings. He gave up four hits, three earned runs, four Ks. But you're saying, Chaos, what are you talking about? He's the odds-on favorite. He's had a good spring. You listen to the Mets front office and, and the guys on in camp reporting and watching and what I've seen, Luke Casey will be your fifth starter. That's what I'm saying. I know we talked about Peterson, Yamamoto, maybe even Lugo when he comes back from the elbow uh, bone chips or, or Gesellman, different guys that we said would slot into that spot. But since then, Carrasco has gone down. Six to eight weeks, it's been designated as a tear. So who knows how long this is going to be. So that means everyone has moved up in the rotation. Uh, and, and we'll get on to what I believe the rotation is going to be and what it's being reported to be. So Lucchese has pitched well. I know that doesn't sound like it against uh, Houston in the last game, but he's had a good spring. And we'll get into his uh, numbers. Another thing that came out, speaking of the rotation, Rojas did endorse Peterson for that fourth spot, especially since the news about Carrasco. So that I want to throw out there for the fans who may have seen it. It came across my timeline late last night. Uh, Rojas did endorse Peterson, so Peterson will be in the rotation. Uh, we were talking about non-roster invitees on the last show and different guys trying to make it out of spring training and come back up to uh, to. Flushing Queens, uh, Eikhoff got roughed up again. We're going to go through some spring training numbers. I get it, spring training. What else? Do, uh, you know who's making a strong bid after watching this last game as our fourth outfielder, potentially, and, and getting some playing time? Although he struck out three times, I don't like to see that. Uh, Almora Jr. with a three-run blast. Uh, and we'll go through some of his numbers later on. Uh, I'd like to see a little extra power. Uh, he's not bad in the field. Uh, we're going to need someone, and God forbid if somebody goes down, and for defensive purposes when it comes to Dom Smith, we're going to need to juggle the outfield. That's 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 what I'm saying. Uh, other things that came out of yesterday's game in the loss, uh, I know a lot of these guys have been reassigned and some designated. Uh, Trovar went two for three with a, with a double a versatile uh infielder, a Drury, a non-roster invitee from the uh, Constitution State, from the Nets, Nutmeg State. I believe Drury has a connection to the state, uh, her neighbors, uh, to the big city, to the south and north. I don't know if I'm too crazy about that. Caught between New York City and Boston? Does it get any worse than that? I, I, I don't know. I'm just asking the question. So Drury, uh, you had a hit yesterday. VR, these are all infielder guys, utility guys that could be bench players. Put them down to AAA, and who knows? You'll hear these names throughout the season, maybe not in the starting lineup. So I'd like to throw out the guys that are trying to make the roster who may be right on the cusp, the bubble team, since we're talking and we're right in the middle of um, the NCAA and March Madness, and I haven't watched one bit of it. March Madness is not the same. It just isn't. Those are the, another thing that I want to throw out here as we start our opening monologue. We're almost 10 minutes in of news notes here on show number three of the Mets report with uh, it's me, it's me, the GOC, wrestling and baseball. It doesn't get any better than that. Here's news that I want to throw out there and I want to throw it out early. Uh, who knows what's going to happen with anything that's going on in society, but September 11th, 2020. 
2021. We all know what that means. The Mets will be playing the crosstown rivals, the Bronx Bombers, the New York Yankees, and it's the 20th anniversary of 9-11 this year. 20 years ago already for 9-11. And who could forget, and this leads to my point, of that home run that Mike Piazza came back in the first game in the city against the Atlanta Braves, and he hit that, I believe it was to right center, that opposite field blast. One of the most historic home runs in history of, of baseball because of its significance to society. And uh, Piazza will be there September 11, 2021, Mets-Yankees mark it down, 20th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, I say anniversary, but it's, I guess it's it's a combination of remembrance. I don't want to say anniversary. So that's something that I want to throw out there for the fans when I have uh, the new news and notes here on show number three. Again, as, as I still look through it, and then it comes across my line, my timeline, I think Lindor... This is just a rumor, speculation, innuendo as I look up here at the lights, different things that I have to adjust here in one minute. I think Lindor is going to sign that long-term contract. You're hearing it from the Guardian of Case. I'm just saying that's my gut feeling. When I get a gut feeling, it doesn't always pan out, but nine times out of ten, eight times out of ten, it comes to fruition. So I'll, I'll take that. Let me adjust the lights here. Ten minutes in on the Mets report here in Chaos Corner. Again, I, I'm excited for this new venture and for all the Mets fans out there and just baseball fans in general. Obviously, we're going to cover the Mets, but now and then I could throw something in there. Leave a suggestion. Uh, leave a, a message in the comments. Hit, Get us in the algorithm. Subscribe, like, hit the bell for when I come on. Uh, always live to tape, but we're working on a whole bunch of different things, as you well know. And, of course, the Chaos Corner home of the Pro Wrestling Podcast, Chaos Corner, on this channel with over 600 videos. Fans, if you don't watch it for that alone, I don't know what to tell you. And now for baseball, that's what we have here on the Mets Report. Let's continue to move forward. Here's just a couple of numbers I'm going to throw out here for spring training since we have a couple of days off and we go in now to the end of spring training leading into the 2021 season, and we're going to discuss that. We'll start off with the pitching staff uh, Strowman will pitch tomorrow. That's going to be his fifth game of the spring training. His ERA is about 2.70. It's been unbelievable. We know Jacob deGrom. He's had four. He'll probably get another start. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. He's pitched in four games. He's got three wins. Uh, as we said about Lucchese, I know he got a little roughed up in the last game against Houston. But overall, he's pitching well. His ERA, again... I know we're competing against uh, uh, rookie ball guys, A ball, double A, which are very good players, perhaps the best when it comes to the minor leagues, and the triple A guys. Lucchese's pitching to a 3.24 even after the last game against Houston. Another sleeper, we haven't really talked about him much. I, much, I mentioned him in, in show number two of the Mets report. Mike Montgomery is doing okay. He's been in three or four games so far this spring. Keep an eye on Mike Montgomery as well as Yamamoto as to that fifth starting position. Again, you can't have enough pitching. We were after these injuries to Syndergaard and, and now Carrasco and, and, and who knows what's going to happen with, with Lugo and how quick he'll return. You could never have enough pitching. Uh, Eikhoff, again, I already talked about it. His ERA is over an 11. I don't know if he's going to be serviceable. Peterson, although endorsed by Rojas, isn't pitching that bad. His ERA this spring, about four and a half. He's only pitching a couple of games, and we know that Walker is going to be our number three, and he's pitching pretty well in spring training. He's been a big addition. He's going to end up being a huge addition to this Mets rotation. Here's what I see for the Mets rotation. You tell me what you think. Again, we have about a week until uh, April 1st. Again, 20% capacity. We can go through that if you want. It's been rumored, and listen to this now. I want you to listen to this as I, as I put my thoughts together here. It's been rumored that Lucchese, just to start the rotation off in a little different way, I don't believe it. you got to go with Jacob deGrom. But it's been rumored Lucchese may pitch opening day. Keep that in the back of your, your head. Don't quote me on that, but I want to throw it out there because I've read some certain underground things that I get from the city emailed to me. More like snail mail. I don't have a lot of connections, but the connections I do have, I trust. 
So here's what I think. DeGrom, Stroman, Walker, Peterson, Lucchese. That's what it's looking like for your starting rotation of five. And again, I don't believe until uh, the second week of the season we're even going to need a fifth man. And if you want, besides the guys I just mentioned, again, we talked about Yamamoto. He's only pitched a little bit in spring training. We'll have to see how it works out. And we're talking about Mike Montgomery now, who's not pitching that well. So we have a little bit of leeway, a little bit of wiggle room. Not much, in my uh, opinion. Date, when we get back to uh, updating injuries, also Vizcaino, who I mentioned on the last show, he's having some elbow uh, issues right now uh, out of the bullpen, as well as Drew Smith with some shoulder issues. So you see that what's what's going on. You could never have enough pitching. You really can't. Our offense, I think, will be okay avoiding a major catastrophe. But pitching, another guy I want to keep an eye on out of the bullpen, uh, I, I read it in the New York Post uh, so I'll give credit and props to them. And Miguel Castro. Keep an eye on Miguel Castro. He could be a solid swing man, uh, a solid guy out of the rotation, maybe a seventh, eighth inning guy. He's pitched five. It's spring training. I, I, I know I keep getting back to that, but he has five no-hit innings so far in spring training. So he's loosening up. We're stretching him out. We'll see what happens. I, uh, Castro will come north. Uh, I believe that. And, uh, I'd like to see him make the roster in that bullpen. Keep an eye on Miguel Castro. I'm hearing good things, seeing good things. Thanks to the Post. I don't really read a lot of the papers. Let's look at uh, different relievers. Batances, again, we talked about uh, uh, his last outing. He pitched a 1-2-3 inning, I believe, but his ERA is over 10 right now. Uh, Batances, Castro, Diaz, Familia, Loop, uh, Trevor May, they've all pitched roughly a handful of games, a half dozen games in spring training. I like to see that. Believe it or not, I'm not a big fan of his, but Familia's ERA is under two in, his spring, tra in spring training. And one of our few left-handers, I believe I reported in the last show, show number two for the Mets report, I think Loop is being reassigned, although it doesn't really mean anything. He's got an under four ERA in spring training right now as a left-hander. May, who I said we just signed, two-year contract, $15 million, also pitching well in spring training, a three-and-a-half ERA. And I don't want to continue to repeat myself here because a lot of fans say, hey, Ozzie, great show, very informative, but you, you, you do repeat a lot. And, uh, so I'll take the criticism. I like criticism. Uh, also, Tarpley, Ross Tarpley, Zamora, another guy that I mentioned who I think has been reassigned. These guys have all pitched a lot of games. We've used our bullpen. Uh, Jeremy Blevins. You remember that I mentioned Blevins, another left-hander, because we're all right-handed strong. We don't have a lot of left-handers. Blevins is pitching well in spring training in under three ERA as a veteran. Let's see what happens if he comes north. My odds are in favor. Uh, I'd like to see Blevins come up north. Gesellman is pitched in four or five games. A solid, serviceable guy. I've been a big Gesellman supporter since he's been on the team. He's not pitching that bad. A four and a half ERA. It's spring training. Take it for what it's worth. Everybody's getting their work. So it's nice to see the list of relievers out there getting work. Uh, Jacob Barnes been getting roughed up a little bit. Those are the guys that stick out to my mind that have been getting roughed up. But overall, our bullpen isn't pitching that bad in spring training. You throw in, listen, throw out Eikhoff, who's pitching terrible right now, Batansis at spring training, Jacob Barnes, a couple other guys, but they'll come around. And, and, and again, I, I want Batansis. It, think of this relief pen if these guys can keep their head and their mind together and they let the pass go. Don't look in the rearview mirror. Look in the front windshield as you move forward, not only in life, but with the Mets and what's happening to us here with the government and Biblically, biblically, and so on and so forth. But we're here to talk baseball. Uh, let's let's play two, as uh, uh, Ernie Banks would say, uh, the legendary Ernie Banks. Speaking of that, I know it's off topic, but it came across my uh, timeline. It's another sport, but another legend. Uh, rest in peace, Elgin Baylor, the great basketball player from the NBA. Uh, rest in peace, Elgin Baylor. We always like to bring a personal touch here on Chaos Corner. The Mets report. 
So those are the different things that are happening on the bullpen. I think we really broke down the starting rotation, what's happening. There's still questions to be made. There's still people fighting for roster spots. Remember that. And, and I'll get to that as soon as it comes across. And I will come in with snippets, as you saw from uh, the uh, here. If you follow the channel, if you subscribe, if you're a new viewer, you'll see that I come across with in-game uh, uh, snippets and clips and video highlights, whether it was Lindor's home run the other day or talking about different things, uh, Carrasco's injury. So not only will you get the Chaos Corner Mets report here on the channel, you'll also get minute, two-minute highlight clips and updates that I get quickly that I just want to throw on the channel to get out to you guys as quick as possible. So that, that's what we have so far. Let, let's get on to the offense. Briefly, spring training stats. I know spring training. We'll go... Uh, Pete Alonso's having a good spring training. I mentioned it in the last uh, few shows. Batting over 400, I believe now. He's batting 382. He's got three dingers. I believe he's got 11 uh, uh, base knocks, 11 ribbies. Uh, he scored a bunch of runs. Brandon Nimmo's hitting 355. Seven runs scored. He also hit one out of the park. McCann's batting 310. Outstanding thus far. Pilar, another guy I talked about, Almora. Pilar could be our fourth guy. He's really going for it, making a statement. He's batting 394. My, my bad, 294. He's got five runs scored. Not bad. A uh, couple of ribbies for Pilar. I, I like it. He's batting 300. We already said Lindor. He's got three slams so far this year. Three home runs, one grand slam. He's knocked in nine. He's batting 294. Conforto's also hit one out of the park. He's batting 286. Six runs scored. Luis Guillorme, going to be a valuable infielder, utility player, batting 273. As we said, Almora and Pilar. Who's it going to be? Four or five. He helped his cause the other day. He's got, he's got a couple of uh, dingers. He's got seven runs batted, and he's batting 259. J.D. Davis, we worry about his defense. Got to pick it up offensively. He's batting 240, but he's got eight runs scored, so he's getting on base. Let's see what the on base percentage is for the team this year. Even Nieto. We have McCann, and this is going back to Piazza visiting camp uh, this past weekend and talking to pe people. Thomas Nieto, Tomas Nieto. Hit a nice shot the other day. He's batting in the low 200s. He's okay defensively. We're going to have to see who's going to be the backup to McCann. We're going to have to... We have Meitzke or Meitzker, I believe. Uh, I think he's been reassigned. But I'm looking at Nieto as a veteran. We'll see what happens. And Dom Smith. Uh, batting under 200. I worry a little bit about his defense uh, in the outfield. Uh, we know he's solid at first base, but Alonzo's there. And we know Dom Smith has one hell of a stick. We need Dom Smith in the lineup for his offense. It's only spring training. Uh, uh, Dom's batting under 200. Let's keep an eye on Dom Smith. Also, Jeff McNeil. Uh, the superstar, super stud, uh, uh, Alonzo and McNeil. I couldn't be two bigger fans, uh, two fans of those two guys. McNeil's also batting well under 200 under the Mendoza line. Uh, it's spring training. I get it. But I just want to keep an eye on it. If guys get a little bit of time and throw out the information and the facts and you guys decipher it for yourself. Uh, other guys on the uh, trying to make the roster, they'll probably be in AAA reassigned. Brandon Drury, Malik Smith, uh, he's got three ribbies, okay defensively. Jonathan Villar, Jose Peraza, all batting under the Mendoza line. Uh, Jake Hager, I know he's been reassigned, and we're not talking about the MMA AEW guy from Inner Circle. I joked about that at episode number two. Jake Hager, the infield, uh, he's not doing too bad in spring training. I don't expect him to make the team. That's the offense in a different... Listen, Alonzo's got 13 hits. Uh, Nimmo's got 11. Lindor, 10. A lot of guys offensively, as you can see. Limited numbers. I get it. A short sample size. I get it. Spring training. I get all the cliches. But we're positive looking forward into 2021. And, and th that's the news and notes that I have for you here on the Mets Report. Uh, show episode number three of things that I wanted to break down since we had a couple of days off. Uh, again, 9-8-1, uh, Stroman's pitching tomorrow. We're coming up on the season fast. Uh, I, I updated you on the injuries and, and the different roster moves and things that I think is going to happen here with the Mets and, and the reports that, that I've gotten. So I'm just going to double-check quickly and make sure there isn't anything that I missed for you guys. I'd like to be accurate. You know that. 
I think we pretty much cover it. We might get into some trivia. We're at uh, coming up on 25 minutes here, live to tape, same day coverage of the Mets report here at Chaos Corner, 20 feet below the surface in the bunker. We know that uh, April 1st is opening day against the Nationals. We already know that. Then we're off uh, on that Friday, and then we pick up two more games with the Nationals before three in the city of not brotherly love before we get to uh, the home opener. So here's the schedule we have left. We just came off uh, uh, the Cardinals, as I said. I believe it was the Cardinals. I think I said the Astros. I don't want to get into all that. It's, it's spring training. We don't have too many games left here. We'll go through the schedule. Different things that I wanted to bring up here and how many different players that are left in camp. We already talked about and I know it was a joke and I caught some flack already from the sensitive people out there about me talking about Chris Christie. Get over yourselves. It's a joke. It's all good. Oh, come on, baby. So that, that's what we have. I, I, I think that we're pretty much covered here on an update before we get back to the game tomorrow, which I'm looking forward to. So fans, pay attention. I don't know if anyone's answered my last trivia question. Let's, let's get it out of there. I talked about who was the Miracle Mets manager in 69, who holds the single-season stolen base record with 78, how many games did Dwight Gooden win in his 85 Cy Young season. Those are the questions I asked on episode number two. So get back to me, 69 Miracle Mets manager. If you're a Mets fan, you'll know this. If you're watching, you'll know this. Mets single-season stolen base record with 78, pretty much a no-brainer there. And uh, how many games did Dwight win in 85 in the Cy Young season? And that's not even when we won the World Series. That was 86. So give me your feedback. I appreciate you guys being here. We're going to have a lot of fun with this fascinating facts from the bleacher seats. So we will be covering this as well down here on, on Chaos Corner, the Mets report. It's an interesting book. And again, I, I throw this trivia out there. We'll have a lot of fun with this, uh, going through the history of the, of the Mets and the quizzes and different photos and the championship teams. This is going to be uh, an unbelievable show. Uh, this is going to be something different out of the box, but it's something I'm well-versed in. Yeah, you guys know me as the guardian of chaos, Big Daddy, the most notorious manager, two-time Hall of Famer in the world of professional wrestling. Uh, you know my illustrious over 30-year career in that industry. You also know of my career 25 years behind the walls, also being a private bodyguard and, and private security and... and uh, a bounty hunter for years and a repo man and a private investigator. It's all on the profile, but I just want to introduce it to the baseball fans too because for as much as you know me from there, know me as the guardian of chaos, the near 50-year Mets fan who grew up in Shea Stadium in the 70s into the 80s. I admit I haven't been there in a while, but you will not find a more knowledgeable, a more historical view, something different on this show and these conversations about the New York Mets and coming from the regular guy's view. And that's you and I, because we're all the same people. So let's let's enjoy this. I'm going to have a lot of fun. Give me your feedback. This is my passion. Uh, professional wrestling, as you can see behind me, and the New York Mets and Major League Baseball. So let's keep all the personal stuff aside, all, all the vitriol, uh, all the politics, all the government stuff, all the social justice issues, all the politics. I'm going to do my best to bring you positivity and keep away from all that stuff unless it's relevant. But I will speak my piece and I will put out my opinions. That's uh, it's just how it is because I am the guardian of chaos and I do tell it like it is. And I'll say that to say this. Thank you for being here in episode number three, Chaos Corner Down in the Bunker, of the Mets report. Hey, you gotta believe. I'll see you in a couple days. Don't you dare miss it.